as we continue our exploration of life in chapter one of the textbook we are going to focus this time on the organization of living things again look for the vocabulary terms that are in italics as we go through make sure that you can define and understand these terms and understand and be able to use them so life is what we call a hierarchy a hierarchy is a system in which each group is composed of several smaller ones and as you move from a larger group to a smaller one all of those things are included and so you probably have learned about these levels of organization in previous science classes before you've gotten to this point in time but we're going to start with the largest one which is the biosphere which is all the earthly environments that support life and move our way down from larger to smaller groups till we get all the way down to the molecule level which is then made of atoms which are even smaller so let's talk about each one in turn uh, you can copy these down if you need definitions you can just pause the video and copy these down if you need them they're also found in your textbook so the biosphere <coughs> is all of earth that can support life and that's most of earth there are a few places where no living things have been found for instance at the tip top of the north pole and the tip top of the south and the bottom of the south pole but even at those places there are certain things that can survive they may not be actively living at the present time but there might be bacterial spores for instance that can be regenerated when conditions are more suitable to their living things so that doesn't mean that they can't live there there are organisms on the very bottoms of the deepest trenches of the ocean where they're discovering more and more all the time so there's not really any place that you can say on earth that is inhospitable to life there are conditions that can support just about life just about everywhere we're going to focus this time on an ecosystem which is in Madagascar Madagascar is an island off the coast of South, of South Africa off the east coast of Africa and it's got lots of unique things including lemurs which is the focus of this particular of this particular diagram so a community in an ecosystem is all the organisms that live in that forest okay and it's the ecosystem includes the non-living things like the dirt and the water and things like that the community includes plants and bacteria and all the animals and insects and so forth a population within that is a group of the same species that live together so this particular population we're focusing on here is a group of ring-tailed lemurs one member of that population is an organism a ring-tailed lemur <coughs> the the organism is made up of a number of organ systems um, we're going to focus this in this particular example on the nervous system. The nervous system includes the brain, spinal cord, and peripheral nerves. And so our organ systems are made of organs. The organ focused on here is the brain. brain and organs are made of a, of a group of different kinds of tissues that work together. Tissues are a group of the same kind of cell that work together. So we have nervous tissue here, which is made of nerve cells inside the nerve cell you have organelles that's the next layer next level down organelles like the nucleus and some other ones and within the organelles you have uh, molecules such as the DNA that is found in the nucleus so we've gone all the way from the biosphere all the way down to a molecule and again molecules are made of atoms which are even smaller and subatomic particles that are even smaller than that so all living things are, are somewhere in this hierarchy um, they don't all go all the way up to the top you know some organisms are only single cells so they'll stop at this level but the point is that they're still part of the they're part of the population which is part of a community which is part of an ecosystem which all is part of the biosphere now as you move from those smaller categories to larger ones you'll find new properties that arise at each level that weren't present there before for instance within the cell you have lots of different kinds of molecules if you just focus on those molecules they have particular properties that you know that they're involved in chemical reactions or whatever but when you put them together in a living cell they work together to do a different kind of job so as you move from one level to the next you'll see new properties emerging or arising these are called emergent properties and they are as they are as a result of the arrangements of and the interactions between the parts at that level so whether it's an ecosystem whether it's a community the biosphere a population there are as you move into each level 
there are going to be new properties that emerge that uh, pertain to that level because of interactions within it. <coughs> the basic unit or the structure, basic structural unit and functional unit of living things is the cell. This is the lowest level, smallest level of structure that can do all of the things that are required for life. All of those seven properties we talked about in the previous notes. There are some things that all cells have in common. All cells have cell membranes. All cells have DNA. Um, there are other things that some cells have and other cells don't. Okay? Some cells have cell walls, for instance. Others don't have cell walls and so forth. We can break all of cells into two main kinds of cells. These are the prokaryotes and the eukaryotes. The prokaryotes are the simplest kinds of cells this is bacteria, for instance. They have no nucleus, no organelles. They do have DNA. The DNA is not included in a nucleus. They don't have any other organelles. Very, very simple. The second basic cell type is a eukaryote. Eukaryotes are cells that contain nuclei and other organelles that you don't find in prokaryotes. Um, when we look at those terms, a lot of terms in biology come from Latin or Greek words. These are two terms that come from Greek words. The karyo part means nucleus, and the pro means before or earlier, and the u means true. So whenever you see a, something with karyo, something in it, it refers to a cell. The pro prefix refers to earlier or before. The u means true. Okay, so the prokaryotes were developed before there was such a thing as a nucleus. The eukaryotes have a true nucleus, as well as other organelles. Here we have a picture showing you a comparison between a prokaryotic cell and a eukaryotic cell. This is a bacterial cell, probably an E. coli, which is found in your intestines. They have a cell membrane and a cell wall and a couple of other structures as well. And they have a DNA, but not in a nucleus and they don't have any other organelles. A eukaryotic cell, notice how much bigger, these are relative sizes, okay, so this is a whole lot bigger, okay, than the prokaryotic cell. Within this eukaryotic cell we have, we have a membrane, of course, we have the DNA, but the DNA is enclosed in another membrane, make inside the nucleus, and there are other organelles that you find within the cell as well. So, big differences not only in size, but also in complexity, and we'll be spending a lot of time talking about cells and their structures and how and their functions. Organisms interact within their environment, not only with other members of their species, but other parts of their environment as well. And there are three main categories of interaction. Firstly, we have the producers. The producers are the plants and other organisms that, that provide food for the organism. They get energy from the sun or from inorganic chemical reactions and use that, change that uh, energy into a chemical energy form that can be stored and also used by themselves and other organisms. Consumers are organisms that eat plants and other organisms, and they get their energy from that stored energy that the producers make. The composers are technically consumers, but they have a very special function in that the things that they eat are the waste products and remains of dead organisms. And they take these waste products and remains and break them down into simpler mineral nutrients. They change those complex compounds into the mineral nutrients that can then be recycled by other organisms. So they perform a very, very valuable function and so they, they deserve, because of that, because of the valuable function that they have, they deserve a separate category for their interaction. Within the ecosystem, there are two main processes that occur, okay? That is the recycling of chemical nutrients within the ecosystem that involves producers and consumers and decomposers and the flow of energy through the ecosystem. So here's how it works. The energy flows through. Usual, most energy in the ecosystem comes from sunlight. It, that is used by producers such as plants to change that energy, that radiant energy, into a chemical energy in the form of food that can be stored and consumed. And then the energy is consumed by animals and other organisms. Used, the energy is converted into a form of energy that can be used by the cells, and then some of the energy is released as heat. 
So the energy flows through the ecosystem like this. The matter is recycled within the ecosystem. Okay, we have the cycling of these chemical nutrients. So we have water and minerals that are taken up by the tree roots, which are used to produce the berries here that are consumed by the lemur. And then when the lemur dies, its remains are decomposed in the soil. And those nutrients that are in complex compounds here within the organism are made simpler again, recycled and used over and over again uh, within the ecosystem.